Here he is. I've, um, I've, yeah. I've sent out a written statement. I'm really here to answer any questions you have on the process uh, or procedure. Uh, I'll say what was in the written statement if it's helpful to you, which is simply to say uh, that the threshold of 15% of the parliamentary party seeking a vote of confidence in the Prime Minister has been passed. Therefore, a vote of confidence will take place uh, within the rules of the 1922 committee. That vote will take place this evening in the House of Commons between 6 and 8 o'clock. And we will announce the result shortly thereafter. Uh, there will be arrangements for proxy votes for any colleagues who can't be present in person uh, in Westminster and will notify colleagues of those arrangements in the near future. Did you communicate the news directly to the Prime Minister? How did he react? I, I'm not going to go into detail of that. Uh, I have followed the rules that we have in place. Uh, I notified the Prime Minister yesterday that the threshold had been reached and we agreed uh, the timetable uh, for a confidence vote to take place. Uh, and uh, he shared my view, uh, which is also in line with the rules that we have in place, that that vote should happen as soon as could reasonably take place. Today. And that would be today. How many letters have you received? Uh, I don't divulge that, um, but the threshold of 15% has been passed. And when was the threshold passed? Uh, it, it's slightly complicated because some colleagues had asked specifically uh, that it should not be until the end of the Jubilee celebrations. So did some of them post-date their letters so as not to interrupt the Jubilee? Uh, I, th I think w that's not a bad description of what was taking place. And that's when the threshold was breached? Therefore, we reached the point where I could communicate with the Prime Minister yesterday, uh, which, I, which I did, and as I said, he agreed with me uh, that we should conduct the votes as quickly as we reasonably can. Will the Prime Minister have a chance to address the 1922 committee before? It's always an open invitation to the Prime Minister to come and speak to the committee, uh, so if he wishes to, we will arrange that meeting uh, this afternoon. Have you put one in yourself, a letter? <laughs> I'm not going to answer that question, but uh, uh, I think technically it would be possible, but it would be a slightly odd thing to do. Are you surprised at the speed with which number 10 is moving? You've seen a few of these come and go, these events. Uh, I'm not surprised by the speed. Our rules say it should be done as soon as is reasonable in the circumstances. Uh, when we held a vote on uh, Theresa May's position in December 2018, uh, we spoke the evening before and we held a vote the next day. Uh, so, you know, I, I suppose it's in line with recent precedent. And I think it's uh, good for everybody to get these things out of the way as quickly and efficiently as, as possible. How long could a contest actually take if there is one at the end of it? I'm not going to speculate about uh, leadership elections. Uh, we're holding a vote of confidence and it will take place today. And uh, you will have a result this evening. Well, I think a confidence vote obviously will provide a, a clear answer. The party will have confidence in the leadership or not have confidence in the leadership. That's the question that will be before my colleagues today. And if he survives, can you confirm that he is safe for another year, or is there a possibility that the rules could be changed? Uh, Technically, it's possible for rules to be changed, but the rule at present is that there would be a year of a period of grace. How did you find the mood in your own constituency over this break in terms of Boris Johnson's leadership? I, I think um, my constituents have been enjoying the Jubilee as we all have. Uh, I think unless you've got any other uh, questions of detail. No, thank you.